That's really been one of the impressive advances in the last decade or so. Of course, uh, neuroimaging methods have been available for some time, and there's been a lot of advancement in how neuroimaging gets done and how we can measure both the structure and function of the brain and, and relate that back to patient's experience of pain. One of the main points I wanted to focus on in, in our session was we need to understand the importance of the brain uh, in patient's pain and try to take steps to figure out in a individual patient to what degree is the brain driving their pain and to what degree is the body driving their pain because in some sense the treatments we use to target the brain are different from the treatments we would use to target the body and we need to match our treatments to the mechanisms that are driving pain in an individual patient. Yeah, I, I think there is evidence that at least in certain individuals and potentially for certain pain conditions, chronic pain is largely a brain disease. Okay? There is evidence that areas of the brain atrophy uh, in people with chronic pain, and some of those reductions in, in brain volume can be corrected or normalized by successfully treating the pain. So it looks like the experience of chronic pain itself is for some reason associated with structural changes in the brain, and if we can successfully reduce the pain or remove the pain, we can help that brain get back to normal. That's sort of on the structural side of the brain, but there are also many, many studies showing that how the brain responds both at rest when people are simply daydreaming as well as when they are presented with a painful stimulus. The brain of certain individuals with chronic pain seems to respond differently than people without chronic pain. We don't know all the details of why it responds differently, but it suggests that for at least some patients, for our treatments to be effective, they're going to have to target and impact the functioning of the brain. Yeah, probably the prototypical sort of centralized pain condition would be fibromyalgia. Uh, but I think an interesting point is that this centralized pain can be a component of almost any kind of chronic pain condition. Certainly knee osteoarthritis is one of the things we talked about today. And our studies on knee osteoarthritis have shown that particularly in people who have knee arthritis and high levels of clinical pain, they tend to show whole body increases in pain sensitivity. Uh, and there's some evidence, again, that their brains have been changed as a result of their arthritis and their ongoing chronic pain. Uh, I'm not suggesting that the brain is the only thing that's important here, but if we're going to be successful, our treatments need to target both the brain and the body uh, in order to reverse some of the changes in brain structure and function that have emerged. So fibromyalgia is the prototypical one. Other pain conditions that are often thought of as having an important central comp component include temporomandibular disorders, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, some headache disorders, and interestingly, many of these pain conditions co-occur, right? Uh, and that suggests to us that some of the mechanisms underlying these different pain conditions overlap and create co-occurrence or comorbidity in the pains within the same person. So I think uh, one of the big questions and important areas is what is it that is changing uh, this brain structure and function? Can we identify neurochemical targets that we might be able to address with either existing or new medications? So identifying some of the specific neurochemical processes that are driving these brain changes uh, would be helpful. Uh, another area in which there's a lot of interest is can we modulate the functioning of the brain non-invasively? Right? And there are 
certain brain stimulation techniques from magnetic stimulation to electrical stimulation. Uh, and then questions abound regarding how can we help patients modulate their own brain processing through talk therapy or exercise therapy or other types of treatment. So I think as we continue to use these advanced neuroimaging tools to uh, assess how the brain is functioning and to assess brain structure, we can look at how different treatments impact brain structure and function and how that might be related to clinical benefits of these treatments and it'll give us a lot better understanding uh, of how different treatments are improving brain function. Yeah, I would say my main summary thought is that when you are sitting in the clinic with a patient who has chronic pain, uh, consider both the brain and the body components that are driving that patient's pain. And there are some fairly simple paper and pencil types of assessments that you can do uh, to identify potential centralized types of processes uh, having them draw out their pain on a body map, and if pain is in multiple body regions, that would be helpful. But thinking about not only is, for example, the patient's knee a target for their pain treatment, their brain is also a target for their pain treatment, and we have effective therapies that can target both the knee and the brain.